So the correct answer in this young woman, of course, is she might have pulmonary embolism. Let's take a look at the echocardiogram again. So when you take a look at the short axis view, you will see an abnormal motion of the interventricular septum. There is a slight flattening, which actually occurs more during systole than during diastole. Now, if we take a look at the next loop, Anna, what do we see? Yes, we see that there's also right ventricular dilatation. And if you compare the right ventricular size with left ventricular size, the normal ratio is not respected. So we can talk about right ventricular dilatation even without measuring. So both of these are actually findings you can see in pulmonary embolism. And then there's another finding. If you look at right ventricular function, right ventricular function is also reduced. And you might even have a discrete sign of uh, McConnell, which is an indicator, a potential indicator for pulmonary embolism, where you have hyperdynamic function of the apex while the remaining part of the right ventricle function is poor. Yes, and we also had a trivial tricuspid regurgitation. Remember, if you have pulmonary embolism, it's not always that you have huge jet and huge pressure, or maybe it's more often the opposite. So don't be deceived. You cannot exclude pulmonary embolism if you do not have tricuspid regurgitation. And if you look at the velocity across the signal, you see it's only 2.9 meters. So there's a little bit of an elevated pulmonary pressure. Frequently, you will not even have very high pulmonary pressure in the acute setting of pulmonary embolism. So that is a finding that also fits very well with pulmonary embolism. And if we look at the CT of the patient, yes, it was conformed. She actually had bilateral pulmonary embolism. And Anna, why are patients who are pregnant actually at risk of developing pulmonary embolism? Well, there are several reasons. It's this hypercoagulative state, for instance, the, uh, that predisposes to thrombus formation in the deep vein and, uh, of course, right. pulmonary embolism. Right. Remember, if someone has a, a cesarean section, they're also at increased risk. And actually, most pulmonary embolisms after pregnancy occur in the setting of cesarean section and usually a few days after the section uh, was performed. And uh, another factor that can contribute is that, of course, you always have some degree of inferior vena compression that causes more or less also stasis of blood in the lower uh, venous system, which predisposes to thrombi as well. So all of these factors contribute and you should always consider pulmonary embolism in patients who present with chest pain and dyspnea after pregnancy.